great pleasure to uh, welcome Dion Dublin. Appreciate it. Looking forward to it. Can't wait. I can hear 46,000 Villa fans going, go on. Go on. <laughs> was gone in less than two seasons. Like, I mean, at least I lasted four. Um, <laughs> mind you, we were never in trouble. I think it all went wrong when they got rid of Ralph Hasselhoek, to be honest with you. I liked him as a manager. Homes under the hammer or match of the day? <laughs> Homes under the hammer all day long. Welcome to the latest episode of No Tippy Tappy Football, brought to you by William Hill. Hi Sam, how are you? Good, Natalie, thank you very much. Great to see you again, as always. You had a lovely holiday. Fantastic, thank look you. Look at his yeah. tan, look at his tan, tan. Yeah. No. yeah. Look at his yeah. tan. Moist- <laughs> I had to moisturise this morning. Probably, <laughs> you know, you know got to try and keep the tan up before it starts flaking away. You know, oh, you're a modern so. man, Sam. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Yeah, so, yeah, good. Very good, thank you. Uh, good. Yeah. Well, we just heard the voice there of our guest today. A very, very recognisable voice. <laughs> so I'm, I'm sure those of you listening will instantly know who it is. But Sam, would you like to introduce our special guest uh, today? Actually, I'm very excited today to uh, introduce our guest today, of course, because I've seen him, you know, develop through his career uh, over many, many years, ultimately ended up at, at Manchester United. Um, and I think that... Uh, was was a dying breed a few years ago as a centre forward, or, the, or should I say, the big centre forward, which are making a comeback now. But it's a great pleasure to uh, welcome Dion Dublin. Dion, thank you. Thank you very much for coming, pleasure, doing our thank podcast you. today. Appreciate it. Looking forward to it. Can't wait. Where have yours and Sam's paths crossed professionally, Dion? Um, mainly in bars, possibly. <laughs> <laughs> that could be true. Yes, mainly in bars. <laughs> yeah. in players' lounges. Players' lounges. lounges yes. After yes. games and stuff, obviously I've, I've played against Sam's teams before and you see each other on the pitch and you shake hands and you say hello and, you know, you try not to tell each other too much. And then, uh, you know, you get on with the games and after the games, for some reason, you'd always cross paths with the manager, you'd always say hello and then you'd have a beer. But that was that's the old school way of doing things. You know, you, you, you go head to head on the pitch, you hate each other for 90 minutes because it was 90 minutes back then, it's like 95, 97 now. And, and then you, you say hello to the manager and, for some reason, the old school way was very much, you know, chat to the manager, the opposing manager, and, and have a beer and just say, well played, and thanks for elbowing me and all that. Can, can, you, <laughs> can, can you imagine that now? No. You'd be uh, I mean, it, it used to be that the captain would give the opposing captain 16, wouldn't be more than 16 in the squad, would it? Yeah, like, exactly. I mean, 16 yeah, yeah. players' lounge tickets. Yeah, that's right. For yeah. after the that's game. Players' lounge, yeah. And they, 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 obviously the... Players had finished, get changed as quick as they could to get in for a pint, not a, <laughs> not a water. It could be a couple of pints. So they get flack on social media these days for having a drink when they're not. You're like yeah. on a Saturday night yeah, in the yeah. mid, like and, so. And that was the, that was the norm. Then then we get on the coach and 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 sometimes sometimes if we were if we hadn't played so well, the manager would stay in the other manager's office for an extra hour and just keep us waiting on the coach because we had to be on the coach for quarter to six. And and otherwise you get fined if you were late, of course. Or might, some managers might even tell the coach, <laughs> the coach driver to get off, and you have to make your own way. Well, that, that, that was that's the prerogative of a manager, you see. You know what so I mean? that's the, the gaffer would say, win, lose, or draw. Get on the coach. Don't anybody's late. Anybody's late, you're going to be fined. Get on the coach. Win, lose, or draw. You're on there now. You wait for the gaffer, and you, you've got your iPad out and all that kind of stuff. As long as it's nice, quarter two. Where's the gaffer? So the ga- it does, this, this rule doesn't apply to the gaffer, you see. So they're having a nice glass of red wine. We're waiting. Gosh, where's the gaffer? The fish and chips is getting cold. It's like, <laughs> come on, gaffer, where are you? Where are you? And the gaffer turns up and he'll come in and he'll go, sorry, lads. And that's it. What can we say to the boss? And then the coach leaves whenever the, the boss wants to leave. So that's an old school way of doing stuff. But, you know, we just get on with it. Just get on with it. You're always first here, though, Sam. So I bet that was well, never you. Yeah, you're always the most pumped. Well, I mean, it, being being on time was a far more disciplined thing than now. I, I think that you you, will, you end up, you know, look, looking at old school um, rules and regulations, and they are the best sometimes. Um, even though I sort of softened in that area, but because. You know, I don't know. Sometimes now where the way it is, it's traffic and and mm. life in general, and the easier life in general, you get to give a little bit to get a little bit more back. Like you mean, but uh, you know, turn up for match day not on time wouldn't play. Unheard of that. Unheard Would of. not play. You would not play. <clears throat> you know, and I think that uh, now that's a perhaps a look. I don't know. Managers perhaps a little bit more. 
lean into in that factor now, but uh, certainly uh, the discipline from that point of view was... The thing about this, Sam, as, as well, is is some of the old school stuff that you and I have lived through in regards to the game and at the training ground and at the games. Some of the old school stuff, we we, we don't want it back in the game. You know, some no. of it went a little bit too far, you know, yeah. that kind of crap. But a lot of it, a lot of it is missed. When you say, Sam, a lot of it's missed yeah. in regards to the new, the new regime of the game. I didn't quite edge the, the new game, get into the new game. And I kind of missed a lot of that. But I think the old, some of the old school ways, for instance, and it's the one I always throw up and I always bark about cleaning boots. Yeah. I was going to come to that myself. Gotta say, yeah, you got to say the same yeah, thing. Because that's what we I believe was. in so yeah. much. Yeah. yeah. You know. I was talking to this about somebody recently. Yes. Yeah, so the idea that the youth players are coming through and they're not doing the, the, the basic things yeah. that you were doing. Yeah. Well, it's, it's just, it's not, it's, for, for me, for me, when I was at Norwich City at sort of seven, 16, 17, there was a training ground called, I think it's called Trouse. And it was a really, it was just a hut. It was a hut and training pitches. So when you went into this hut, first team was on the right and everybody else, kids were on the left. And then you had to, the, the, the first team would leave their boots, you clean their boots, knock on the door. Yeah, knock on the door. Knock on that the was door. It. Knock, knock on, you can't walk in can't the first walk team. walk in, yeah. Knock on the door. So, Who is it? It's Dion. What do you want? I've got Gunny's boots. I've got Gunny's boots. Leave them outside. <gasps> leave them outside the door and you go again. If you go into the dressing room, you get, you know, the, the, the balls, sock the balls, uh, the socks, you know, the socks going to ball, throwing them, all that kind of stuff. So all that, all that discipline yeah. is 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 incredible. So what that makes you want to do as a footballer is right. I've been doing going left for the rest of. Them. I want to get in that. I want to get in that dressing room. Yeah, I want my boots clean. So it's you know, it's and it's standards. You know, standards. You'll never ever. No one in this room, no one listening to this and watching this podcast will ever ever see me with dirty shoes. Never yeah. because yeah. of that. Yeah. Standards, the high polish. standards. Yeah, yeah. you got to do it. It's great. I like that. We've talked about it a lot on on this show, Sam. But I imagine if you try to make kids do that these days, the parents would be knocking on. <laughs> oh well, that's the problem, <laughs> isn't it? Yeah. That's the problem now, isn't it? I mean, you know, the the parents really, really should keep the should keep the nose out, shouldn't they? You know, if you're coming into discipline, so without discipline, you cannot succeed at anything. Never mind football. I mean, discipline is is everything in terms of how you're going to achieve success. And obviously, the manager's job is more and more difficult today to install that discipline sometimes because um, obviously in the past, managers go, go too far Yeah, the players. They, you know, this is where the PFA used to come in and do do a very good job, like you mean, and and, and make sure that the, the player wasn't abused because that would be the case. I mean, I'd be, you know, locked in the in, in the manager's office Press to sign a contract, and that you know get that signed, or you'll be down the road. You know what I mean? You just go, or, or like, I'll sign much. it. I'll sign it. Yeah. That's it. Like, well, you know, thank you. You know, so that had to that sort of side yes. had, side of had to stop. But the discipline that we're talking yeah, about yeah. on and off the field, it's good for them. Sam. It's good for them. Yeah, it's good for them, and and it's it's nice. And I think the I think a lot of what we don't what we don't allow from the outside looking in, because I know a lot of the coaches that are coaching now in the game. What we don't allow is the kids to, I call them kids, but the younger yeah. players, to, to make their own decisions. Correct. To not make their own decisions because they're told you cannot do that. Mm -hmm. You cannot clean boots. You might get on with a couple of senior pros and you might want to clean their boots or they might say, would you clean your back? I can't, I'm sorry. You know, little things like that are yeah. good. You know, what Sam's talking about, that you know, the contracts and that, that's the old school way, which we want to, you know, yes. that's bullying, that's bullying. We don't want that. Yeah. Cleaning yeah. boots and tidying and respect yeah. and putting your kit in a bin. You know, if you've got a sock bin, a short bin, and yes. make sure the kit goes in the bin, you know. Yeah. It's, 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 it's certain simple. players to look after. And, of course, if you looked after them well, Christmas, they'd give you a fiver or a ten. Yes. <laughs> oh! Which was incredible. You know what I mean? Which was like, wow. Like, oh, you mean? Because, wow. I mean, I think when I started, that's how long goes that. I can't remember that. <laughs> when I started, <laughs> I was on six pound a week. That's, that's, that's it. just... I could live on six pounds And then you'd get five pound tip. Like, uh, five a tip, a tip, a present at Christmas. Like, I mean, yeah. Yeah. It's huge now. Like, massive. You know and if, I mean? you look, if you looked after three players... Yeah. Oh, you're in. You're yeah. in, aren't you? You, get some, you can get some, get some pop and crisps. <laughs> <laughs> oh, how different it is. How yeah, different so. it is these days. <laughs> um, now, Dean, we always like to, towards the start of the podcast, just check in on Sam and, um, because we love, I love this podcast so much yeah. and I love Sam, but I live in fear that he's going to get another managerial job because <laughs> okay, then there'll be no, yes, no podcast. So, yeah. oh, 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 yeah, so oh, we'll oh, just yeah. check. Um, yeah. I can't 
can't keep up with the amount of managers that have gone and come in the last you couple know, of weeks, to be yeah, honest. I have to, I have to say, in all honesty, uh, I am a bit surprised if I haven't actually had a, a direct phone call from any of the clubs who's, who have who've dismissed the managers and said, would you come and do a job for us, even if, it, if it's just the norm come to the end of the season, which seems to be the case for a lot of change in managers yeah. these days where, you know, Frank Lampard's gone in at Chelsea and yeah. that's only till the end of the season. Um, you know, I don't know how long Roy will carry on, you know what I mean? So mm. it, it, it'd probably be on the basis of the reaction of Crystal Palace players mm. And the shrewdness of Steve Parrish, who I've got great respect for, yeah. you know, and and everybody talked about Patrick shouldn't have been sacked, and uh, and I think Patrick Vieira in his first season did a fantastic job, and there was all this talk again about the style of play compared to Roy. Roy was all that. Roy was this. Roy was that. Roy was this. You know, and and it. And I, and, I, and I get it, and I, and I get that the young coaches, I've talked about this before, have no other choice than to mm. play tippy-tappy football because they're frightened to death of being labelled yeah. like Roy or like I have in the past. But Roy comes in and wins three on the trot and just tells everybody, well, there you go. Who is the man? He is the man. <laughs> and wherever he's been, he's been the man. So, you know, so I think that... Uh, What's happened there, and, and some of the some of the changes have, have been unbelievable because there's more changes now. Thirteen is it? I think twelve yeah, or thirteen like that, yeah. changes yeah. in one season. So on the on that question, I am surprised that now I never got the call. Uh, but maybe people think that some time is past. Who knows? But you never you never know when it might ring. And if it does, you take the opportunity if you if you fancy doing it. Sam, is, it, is this the longest? Period of time that you haven't had like a call in these circumstances. Yeah, it is. It is Dion. Yeah, and and I think that uh, in the early stages you've got a great uh, uh, difficulty overcoming not managing. Yeah, it's withdrawal symptoms. It's all sorts of the buzz. But yeah, yeah. The, the not getting up in getting in in the morning and you know finding out what the problems are because there's problems every morning. You know, every morning you go in and you've got. You plan for that day yesterday, and you come in, and you know, you know who's left his wife, or you know somebody's got, you know, you, you, you knock comes on the door. What's happening now? And all you know, so I mean, you have to deal with. Like, I mean, that's why I talk about management. Is the coaching is about twenty twenty five percent. That's yeah. all it is. Um, so you 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 do get withdrawal symptoms on the basis of what am I going to do? And that's why this has been so fantastic for mm. me, this podcast, because we can come and talk about football, have some great guests, and 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 you still feel in touch with it, mm. you know? So, gotcha. uh, yeah, oh. and then as time goes on, that gradually you don't feel that anxiety as much about, or itch or scratch, well, I want to get back in. Yeah. But you you hope the, th the phone might ring and get, give you an opportunity mm. But it isn't a desperate need for me now. Still time, still yeah. time. Well, there's always time. Well, with a lot, with the lights of Roy popping in at seventy five and, and doing the job, and Neil going yeah. back. Yeah. yeah, you know the 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 old experienced managers are coming back again, and I do hate saying that. By the way, older experienced managers. It's a fact, though, isn't it? Yeah, it's a fact. Nothing you know. wrong with experience, Sam. Um, Leeds, we talked about them in the past where they when they got rid of their of Jesse March because he did seventeen goals in the last four games. Do you think you'd have done a better job? Absolutely. I didn't, I'd had no problem in terms of, you know, looking at the lead situation. And like everything else where where I I, I have certain ways of uh, certain ways of working. And the one way of working that everybody sees as a negative, which is actually the best positive of all, stop goals going in. Because <laughs> everybody, down, everybody forward, down there concedes more goals than anybody else. Yeah. And the players are... Uh, are oh, suffering from a huge lack of confidence, and so you, you got you go in and set the structure. Mm. The structure is not to get beat, because because confidence is built by yeah. results. Yeah. So it doesn't matter how much good how good you are as a coach, or whatever, unless you put those results right quickly as possible, mm. which starts it starts with a nil nil. It starts you know it starts with a draw. It's a point. 
And the more the more draws you get, ultimately, and extending mm. to winning football matches because confidence is built by the fact that when you're getting up on a Sunday morning to come in and do your recovery, you're not coming in by we've lost. And the it game. changes. It changes. It changes the training ground. Yeah. It sounds silly, but. If, if if the gaffer's sat in the office and he's watching players come in and they're closing the door to the car and like that, he, his job starts from getting that to that. But if you've got a nil-nil after losing five, because Sam's just come in and he's got a nil-nil and you've had a... You, you, you're locking the door to your car and you're walking in and you, you, your shoulders are kind of pinned back and the gaffer's looking, okay, body language is okay. We can do this today. Let's keep them on that, you know, even keel. So... You've got to start somewhere. You've got to start somewhere, and that's don't let people score goals against you. Yeah. Difficult, but don't you know that's the thing. One of your other former clubs, um, and I know we've said on the podcast before, it's, you know, you don't like talking about managers when they're in jobs, Sam. But West Ham, obviously, David Moyes is oh, is struggling yeah. a bit there now. Yeah. There's rumours going around. I'm hearing all these different names linked with that job. He's still in the job, but you're hearing Graham Potter, Brendan Rodgers, Paolo Fonseca, who I had to Google by the way, is the Lille manager. Um, he's in you know, lots of rumours. What do you think about that West Ham situation? Well, David Sullivan's not a a, a real foreign coach, man. He's one of the he's one of the few yeah. British owners of a football club that we have left, and he prefers a British coach. He tried Pellegrini, and he failed miserably. He paid him more than anybody else he's ever paid in his Did life. He? Spent more than he's ever spent in his life, David, at the football club. Wow! And he came with a great reputation on what he'd done at City, but failed miserably at West Ham. Was gone in less than two seasons. Like I mean, at least I lasted four. Um, <laughs> mind you, we were never in trouble. Um, but um, I think that uh, he's definitely, definitely. I would hope still stick to that trend and look around for a British manager rather than rather than go abroad. But you do get this pressure from the press yeah. now. All the press and the fans who have been sucked in, or the press sucking everybody in. Yeah. The foreign coaches are better than we are. I can assure you, some are Pepe's, obviously yeah, yeah, better yeah, than me, yeah, of course. Yeah. Definitely like Jurgen Klopp, obviously proven yeah. to be that. But in terms of you, what you believe in, and how you think you should go around, determines on where you go. And I've talked about this before. I lost my job at Newcastle it was the biggest knockback in my career, even though I didn't deserve to lose it by a change of ownership, because my I'd it take me seven. Six, seven years to build build me as a top manager in terms of in the Premier League with Bolton, building a great team mm. and with great players. Newcastle lasted six months. I get the sack, not not for no reason other than a change of ownership. What a damaging career move that ended up being for me. And I ended up recovering from that yeah. and never getting never getting what I really looked for, apart from the England job, of course. And then and then life moves on and you have to accept that. You can look back and say, "Well, I should have, I should have had the chance to do Man United." Should have done. Yes, that's what I wanted. Yes, what I should have gone abroad. Maybe could have gone to Spain or Italy. You know, didn't get. So, but what I did do was adjust to what was happening at the particular mm. time and take <clears> the opportunity to go and manage and show everybody where I can manage and I can manage anywhere. Yeah, I can manage yes. anywhere. You know what I mean? So it, it doesn't. It could be in this country. It could be a bit. I can manage wherever I want. The thing is, is you don't manage the same now as I did in the past. Yeah, I'm managed completely differently because I move with the times, mm -hmm. and I was I've done. So you know, it 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 is what it is. You know. Sam, when, when were you at um, Bolton? What years were you at Bolton? Uh, Ninety nine. <coughs> uh, for I went on my fourth <coughs> fifth birthday. My first game was nineteenth of October, nineteen ninety nine, when we were fourth in the bottom of the championship. And how long were you there for? Oh, I left in 2007. Okay, so that so that's eight years-ish. Yeah. Eight years. So in between two, in between 99 and 2007, I would have been at Coventry and Villa. Yeah. Now, I, I, I remember this because having played against Sam's team quite a lot, I remember going and playing against Sam's team and for the very first time in my 22-year career, I'm looking at Bolton and as they're coming out to warm up <clears throat> at home, we've travelled away, and there must be 15 staff, 12 staff. And we were on the pitch thinking, we've got, we've got Gordon Strack and we've probably got Gary Mack doing a bit as well and probably the, the kit man's warming up the keeper, I don't know. And uh, Sam's got about 12 staff and one's doing the keepers and one's doing the defence and the defence of four of them over there and you've got the four. 
and everybody's doing it on, you know, and we're going flipping. What are they, what's all them staff doing? What are they all doing? And we didn't know that that was the next stage in, in the footballing managerial world. And then you've got people that were sat just behind the dugouts with computers and stuff. And we're thinking, what, what are they doing there? And we didn't realise that, you know, Sam's taken upon himself to try and move with the times before the times arrived with all the analysis. And, and we didn't know about this. And then people start to find out about what Sam was doing. And, and you know, without blowing smoke up Sam's arse, that's exactly what was happening. And we and, and then you see them play in a certain way. And they, oh, okay, okay. So he's got a coach for that and he's got a coach for that and he's got that. And you, you I know you don't want to hear this, Sam, but you're one of the ones that started it all off. Mm. All that analysis, which is, which, is, which is now, you know, is key for the game. And that was in 99. You know, that's amazing. Fair play to you, man. Well done. Yeah, Thanks, not, yeah. not the first person on this podcast it's amazing. To, have, yeah. to, to have said that's that. That's crazy. It's amazing. Um, we'll, we'll get on, obviously, to your football career mm. in, in a bit as well. But since you retired, you've had a phenomenal media career as well. Yeah. So I need to ask Sam the big question. <laughs> Do you watch Holmes Under the Hammer, Sam? <laughs> I have watched Holmes Under the Hammer. <laughs> yes. I have. At least someone's of watching. Of course. At least someone's watching. Well, listen, <laughs> exactly what I was telling you about. When you wake up sometimes and you, want, what, and you think to yourself, all I've, what am I going to have for breakfast today? Am I going to have cornflakes, wheat to be porridge, <laughs> put my fruit on it? I'll sit down and watch uh, uh, Phil and Ollie, and then I'll flip over and I'll go, where's Dion there? What's he doing? <laughs> Oh, I mean, so I can sit because uh, this is the other one, which is how do you get into that? What <laughs> I mean, so how many properties do you own now? Then, honestly, I, I tell you what, Sam, Have you gone into that market it's, yourself, it's, because, yeah, 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 yeah. Sam, yeah. I started, I started my portfolio by mistake in 1992 when I signed for Man United. Yeah. So I went to Man United, got a house in in Cheshire, bought a house in Cheshire. Uh, two and a half years at Man United didn't work out, broke my leg, all that kind of stuff, which we'll chat about, and um, and then I moved on to Coventry. Kept the house, moved to Coventry, bought a house in Coventry, moved from Coventry to Warwickshire, kept the house. And that's how my portfolio started back in 1992. So somebody must have been doing some spying on me. You know, he, he likes his property and stuff. So And little did you know. Little did I know that they asked me, they asked me one day, they said, uh, Dion, would you do you fancy Holmes under the hammer? I'm thinking, yeah, that that program about houses. Yeah, yeah, of course, why not? What do you want to do? Well, there's a house in Salford that's empty. There's a cameraman. He's gonna follow you around, tell us what you think he's doing, and we'll go from there. After about an hour, he's filmed everything. They cut it short, done a 15-minute video, had a look at it and said, you know what? You didn't turn your back on the camera once and, you know, that kind of stuff. And I thought, okay, fair enough. And that, and that if you can believe it, this September is nine years. No! What? Nine years I've been doing the show. Nine years? This September, yeah. It's crazy, oh isn't it? It's a really, <laughs> it's a really, really popular show. If I'm ever in in the day, you put it on and you just get sucked in because you, you, you want to see what's happened. It's yeah. clever. Yeah. And of course, you being oh. on that show, you've ended up with a catchphrase. Now, Sam's catchphrase <laughs> is no tippy-tappy football, which is why we now have a podcast called <laughs> no, no tippy-tappy right, yeah. football. So your catchphrase, you yes. know where this is going. Yes, I do. Stairs going to the bedrooms. Yes, yes. Could, do you think, could we? are you going to do t-shirts, mugs? Could you have a podcast? <laughs> <laughs> I, 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 I don't know. It happened and uh, it just, and I didn't realise that I was saying it all the time. It's just a natural thing. You go through the door. A lot of the houses that we go into are, are, are two or three beds, terrace houses. That's what we get to normally. You open the door and the stairs are there. So you, you have to mention it. You come into all you say what it's like, what it smells like, what it looks like, and, and then the stairs to the bedrooms and you carry on. Uh, and somebody actually did a, I don't know if anybody's seen this, but somebody did a compilation of me saying so stairs how many times to you the bedrooms. Yeah. And they've done about a two minute, three minute compilation. Stairs to the bedrooms. Yeah. Hello, well, yeah, stairs to the bedrooms. It was, it was crazy. Well, so yeah, it stuck with me. So I, I'm not going to That's a good thing though, isn't it? Yeah, it's a that's great a good thing. thing now. You, you know, you're, you could be that program will go, oh, so even, <laughs> stairs to the bedroom. Does anybody shout it out? <laughs> yes, they do. Yeah, there, they really? do. Uh, yeah. in, uh, uh, football, uh, football matches as well, when I'm walking yeah. to do, with my headphones on. The only put the stairs. Oh, You're like, good. are you ready for it? You're like, okay. Oh, God. Yes. You're not the first one to say it. <laughs> but it's good. It's, it's nice It's nice to do. I love the show. And like I say, to be able to do it for as long as I have. It's, it took me about four four years, I think four years, to try and find your feet. Presenting's, as you all know, presenting's tough. Yeah. It's knowing where to stand, how to talk, when to talk, and what to say. And sometimes it's best to say nothing. And, you know, you just have to learn your trade on the job. And, yeah, I, I, I love it now. And it's, it's second nature to me. Yeah, great. Yeah. 
so many footballers are forging careers in the media when they retire now. I mean, most of them sticking in football, so yeah. you're very unique when it comes to that. Um, we've had a guest on um, who you'll know, Robbie Savage. He was on earlier um, in the season, who obviously also has a, a big media career now. Yeah. There's a bit of a famous incident with you and Robbie Savage, Birmingham <laughs> versus Villa. Um, have you seen him since? Do your paths cross in the media? What's it like now? I didn't touch him, ref. <laughs> <laughs> Referee, I didn't touch him, honestly. It was, it was, I've seen Robbie loads of times. Robbie's fine. And Robbie's fine. He's, he's harmless, Robbie. What it is, what it is with, what it is with footballers, we are, we will always be um, perceived as the person that the fan sees on the pitch. So Robbie on the pitch was gobby, cheeky. Uh, uh, you know, that's what a he pain was. Pain in the neck. Yeah, pain yeah. in the neck. That's yeah. what he was. And yeah. he will hold his hands up and he will say, Leon, that's what I wanted to do. Yeah. And he wanted to annoy you and, and, and make you angry and get you sent off and all the rest of it. Uh, my persona on the pitch is just possibly somebody that he got about the pitch and, you know, and, and just did his holding the ball up job and scored a few goals. Um, Robbie on that day at Villa Park, the balls, I'm playing centre half by the way, and the ball's coming into Robbie and I'm thinking to myself, this, 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 could, this could be my time. This could be my time. Yeah. And I'm thinking to myself, right, the ball's received, Robbie's there about three seconds before me. Robbie gets the ball, he passes it away. I'm about three seconds late. Straight through the back of him, didn't touch him, but he accept, but he knew I was coming. He jumped up in the air, his blonde locks all over the place, and he falls on the floor. And I've got up as a referee. I'm, I'm really sorry, really sorry, referee. Robbie's giving me all the expletives and stuff. And as he got closer and got closer and closer, he never. People say to me, "What did he say to you? What is? Was he racist?" I said, "No way, was he racist?" And uh, he's just trying to get me sent off, which he, which he, uh, which he achieved. And he come closer, and he come closer, and as he's walking towards me. I can hear 46,000 Villa fans going, go on, go on, go on. <laughs> and, 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 and he kept walking towards me, he kept walking towards me. And we leant together and I thought, oh, guys, don't, don't, don't. Partial, I did. And he went down and red card doubling, get off the pitch. And that was it, really. I've seen Robbie afterwards and we're all fine. But at that moment, you know. We can shot. all lose it. Yeah, and it's, a red, it's a red mist, we isn't it? We can all lose it. We call it the red mist. mist. It comes it, down yeah. and, and there's no way out of it, unfortunately. I was completely out of order. Robbie done nothing wrong whatsoever. But uh, yeah. What, what I want to know is how long did this centre-half career last? <laughs> I don't know, actually. I, I started at Cambridge United. Really? Many, yeah, it started at Cambridge when I, I think Dacia and Phil Chappell back in the day were injured. Had to drop in and play a few games for Cambridge and then I played a few games for Norwich. And I think out of my 22 year career, I possibly played about two years, three years oh, at centre half okay. as well. Yeah. So, wow. so if, hold a minute. So if you say 20, so, so, so if you put 75, 75 more goals on my career, hey, eh, I would have been I up know, there with yeah. the best, wouldn't I? Yeah. Eh? <laughs> That's what I say. Anyway. What was your season goals season? best goals wise? It was uh, 90, it was 98 with, um, Michael Owen won the golden boot together, myself, oh, Michael yeah. Owen, and Chris Sutton. Ah, uh, yeah. Yes. I think we got, I think we scored 21. Wow. 21, 21 in all comps and 18 league goals. 18 league goals. That's a phenomenal total, but I think Erling Haaland may have ruined all of previous totals yeah, I don't, for I don't, everybody I don't, I don't now. Who, I don't know who you're talking about. I don't know who you're talking about. It's supposed <laughs> he, to be all right, isn't he? Oh, he's just smashing records. I, I can't keep up with it. I think he's on 48. It might be 49 goals for the yes. season now across yeah. all competitions and in the Premier League. Just, I think it's. I don't know, 34, is it? Is it yeah. 32? I can't remember. Yeah, we got it. He missed that penalty last night and yeah. had another one onto it. And, that, and that's the thing, you see. That's the thing. Because of because of the way he is and because of his mindset, and Sam will know, Sam will know hundreds of centre-forwards that just have a mindset of scoring goals. And when they're not scoring goals, they're not happy and they don't care if their team wins. Their job is to score goals. Um, he's, he's, along with Harry Kane, just taking it to a new level. He's come in and he's just... There's nothing... There's nothing <clears throat> Excuse me. You never, you very rarely see him out on the wing, and you know he just stays where you can score goals, and he's just, you know what it is with him. And I want everybody to, I want everybody to to, to watch next time. His preparation, his preparation before scoring is what you got to watch. Mm. He prepares so well. His feet, he gets in the back post, all his movement is just impeccable, impeccable. But A lot of people won't won't see that, but. The, no. Or maybe know what you're talking about, but yeah. you but you actually when it the, you watch the goal going, but it's great when it just goes back because you watch where he starts from, yeah, and then he's looking, he's looking where the play develops, and then he's looking where the, what the defenders are doing, and then whatever the defenders are doing, he goes nowhere near him. He get he get he's the only man that finds 
space like he does at the moment in the game as often as he does. Yeah, exactly. And he finds this space in wherever it might be. And and even even for balls that drop down, yeah, they yeah. seem to drop. The, he seems to be there, and they drop to him. But and you think there's no reason that they should yeah. be they should be dropping in that area. But actually, being statistic head, yeah, there's areas in the pitch that we or I would show and say that second balls more drop in this area than that and one, do, yeah. and this one, do. like you mean, do, do a, does a player recognise that? Or does a player do that instinctively yeah. through the early stages of his development? Mm. And because I was being to we were with Robbie Fowler, and I said you can't. I didn't think you could coach a goal scorer into scoring goals, and he said he did it by practicing himself. Yes, correct. So yeah. you know, if we remember that, yeah. anybody remembers that podcast. So especially so he has he has a knack he has a knack, or whether it's his early input by his dad or yeah, when yeah. he was coached or yeah. what it was developed it's certainly you know phenomenal it is it's an, it's an amazing feat and he's and he's an amazing he's great to watch he's just very very good to watch some of his goals i just can i just I can't know. work out how he does it how he gets his body I know. um so you mentioned the early parts of your career yeah. before we mentioned norwich i just want to go back to that because just before we came on you dropped a mic drop moment for me when you told me who you used to live with yeah, when I you know. were at norwich so how old were you i was about 17 i think 17 18 ish i uh, my my brother ash was best friends with a footballer called dale gordon yeah. Dale Gordon played for Norwich. He was their kind of star man, played a winger, uh, good looking, mixed race chap, lovely hair, lovely body, you know, lovely car. He was the man. And my, <laughs> he, was, he was the man he was back then. And back then we have sponsored cars and it had yeah. Dale Gordon all over the car. Yeah. <laughs> and he plays for Norwich City. And that, that, was, that was big back in the day. Yeah. And uh, my brother, uh, Ash, lived in Great Yarmouth. So I'd live in Great Yarmouth with my brother. And Dale would so kindly come and pick me up from, um, he was on the coast um, and he'd pick me up and we'd go to training together. Because um, my brother chewed his ear off, get my brother a trial, get my brother a trial. So Dale said, yes, I live in uh, Yarmouth with my brother and we live, this is true, we live above a pub on the seafront called Boobs. <laughs> I, I swear the, oh. uh, the pub called Boobs on the seafront. And I lived, oh, and I lived with my brother there because the nightclub was, and the other guy that lived with us, I was only there at Norwich for sort of eight months and I lived with this certain person for about four, four to six months. Um, and it was Jason Statham. Jason Statham was a Yarmouth kind of boy back then. His brother Lee and Jason used to work on the markets. His dad, um, stage name Barry Wilde, used to do all the singing in all the clubs. <laughs> <clears throat> you know, it was, it's, it's incredible. Amazing. So I didn't know, I didn't know that Jason was going to be what he is today. A massive Hollywood actor. A, mass, a massive Hollywood <laughs> actor, but he was he was a drummer. That's how my brother and Jason were best pals because he was a drummer. My brother's a bass player. Um, Jason's obviously a model because he's because he's beautiful. And I don't know if a lot of people know he was a high board diver for Great Britain. Oh yes, no, I think I did. Yeah, that. he used to yeah. he used to dive wow. for Great Britain. He used to do wow. all, 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 all a diverse. All, oh, incredible! Yeah. In terms of what he did, incredible. And that was that was his party trick. So I was I think Jason's yeah. maybe a couple of years older than me, possibly he's about 54 maybe now. And he's party trick in the bars while my brother was DJing. Um, he'd do that backflip that he that he can do at the bar. And I'd be like, that. yeah, he's with me. He's with me, uh -huh. that'll be it. <laughs> and are you still friends? Do you still, I'm you not spoken to Jason or? for years, not for years and years and years. But um, yeah, it's he's a lovely bloke. Well, he was back then. He's a lovely bloke. I doubt he's changed. But um, yeah, he's, he was, he was, uh, it was nice to be around. Wow. Destined to be successful, I'd say, yes. by, by yeah. the fact of it, all the diversity in his career, yeah. what he did and what he tried and how he did yeah. it. It, it was he incredible. He had a determination to succeed at probably anything he turned his hand to yeah. then, didn't he? Because he, he had everything there as well. And there's a scene in his film, which is called Snatch, the film Snatch yeah. from way yeah. back. Yeah, yeah I remember the very, that. The opening scene is when him and his mate are running down the stairs with a suitcase and the suitcase comes open. It's got all jewellery in that they've been selling illegally yeah. and the police are trying to catch him and there's a freeze frame and all the gold's falling out and uh, Jason used to sell jewellery in the market in Great Yarmouth right. and his famous phrase was and I remember it today you can scratch it scrape it bite it chew it the gold won't come off very good you can have that 
Jason Statham, what a legend, isn't it? Oh, yeah. this me- yeah. You never know where these chats are going to go, <laughs> oh do you, Sam? You never know. No. And he owes me a father, by the way. So. <laughs> <laughs> really need interest on that, exactly, by the way. Yes. Yes. A lot of interest. Yeah. So, uh, further on in your career, obviously, huge success at Aston Villa. Yeah. By the way, Aston Villa, Sam, yeah, what yes. a season they're having. Well, I mean, it's, it shows you what, and, 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 and obviously I didn't, didn't like seeing Steven Gerrard, you know, yeah. fail at Villa, certainly after his start. Um, you know, but what uh, Emery has done is, is Crimson, unbelievable, isn't it? Yeah, fail, it is. fail, 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 seen as a failure at Tottenham. Yeah, also, uh, yeah. Uh, sorry, Arsenal, yeah, my yeah, fault. Yeah, yeah, sorry, yeah. and then and then obviously comes and takes the Villa what, into six now. Like you mean, and, and, and they just look they look unbeatable at the minute. And, 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 and I don't know what's happened with Ollie Watkins, but he's suddenly become a goal scorer. I know. I mean, and he, you yeah, know, he has. I mean, he could score goals, but yes. he was a 10, 12 man, yeah, wasn't he? You know what I mean? Yeah. He looks uh, different, doesn't he? Yeah. He's, He's had that different. many like in his last 10 games now, I think. Something yeah, like that. I think I think there's, a, there's there's some stats out there that we look at sometimes before I go on <clears throat> the TV shows that I do uh, with the footy that he's he's doing less running. Yeah. Uh, you know, he's, he's he's coming back into his own heart less. So basically, I think what um, Unai's done, he said, well, Danny Ings, you're not for me. I'm going to allow you to go. I like Danny Ings centre forward. I know, I know yeah, Sam yeah. does as well. Yeah. Danny's been allowed to go to forward his career at West Ham. And now, basically, that says to Ollie, right, you're my man. So for him, for him now as a number nine, he's going, oh, oh really? Oh, great stuff. So his body language has changed already, Ollie, you know? And he's thinking, wow, he, he's going to back me. He likes me. Stop running about. Stop going to the right wing. Stop going left wing. Just do exactly, basically, try and copy Haaland. Do what Haaland does. Stay where you can score goals. And Ollie, when he has the energy and the time to think about just goal scoring, we're just starting to see the rewards now. I think it's that staying inside the 18-yard box stuff. Huge, isn't it? huge. There's, there's always been a sort of untold story about goal scorers shouldn't go outside the 18-yard box. You know I never what I mean? did. I never stay did. Within there, <laughs> stay within that region So because you, you've got to get in the box for crosses or you've got to be fronting up on the edge yeah. of the box to be into feet or you've got to be on the far post. Can you get to the far post? Well, you can't if you're if you've gone out on the wing or you've gone out on the left or the right. And I think, yeah, when we watch Haaland, he he rarely goes outside the the width of the penalty box, doesn't he? Like I mean, and gets in the box. One of the best, I mean, a dying breed of players that running behind, and uh, he's one of the best. Yeah, because no, he I, he's I his strength. One of his real strengths is playing playing the ball, sliding the ball between the full back and the centre half. It's great. He's great at what running the channel, as we mm. used to call it, and you know he can get in there more than any, anybody. But you I mean bit of a bit of a dying breed from that point of yeah. view. Yeah, I think he's really think, good. <clears throat> I think Ollie Watkins is again. I'm, I'm using Harlem because he's at the top of the tree at the moment. Mm. He's he's forcing his teammates to play certain passes yeah. because when they receive the ball, whether it's Wendia or or um, Louise in there, who doesn't matter. Whenever they receive the ball and they've got a little bit of time, he's like this. He's ready to go. Pass him the ball. So, yeah. so what happens is as a centre forward, if you do that and you keep doing that, you are going to score goals. You're forcing your teammates to play certain passes. And he is. He's scoring now. He's only, I don't know if you know this, Dion, he's only 14 goals behind your Villa total above really? going above you in the Villa's all-time scorers. We need to get him, get, him, get him a move. <laughs> get him a move. Ship him out, Sharpish. <laughs> Ship him out. It was, it was smashed out of the park and rightly so. Rightly so. I did mention I played centre-half, but I don't want to talk about it. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, should we be looking, when it comes to sort of manager of the seasons, I mean, should Unai Emery be in discussion, do you think, Sam? Well, it, it's got to be, it's, it's got to be Arteta if Arsenal win the league. Can't be anybody else. Amazing. If he does it. I mean, they're under the cost a bit now. Certainly because they play Man City very shortly, don't they? They do. It could be the change of it could be the change of the the top for the first time all season, I think, isn't it? You know. It's been incredible, hasn't it? So it's been been really, really good. And obviously Pep's done him a favour with the players he sold him, I'm not so sure. I did not, I'd, I'm not so sure if I was manager of Arsenal, I rang Pep and said, sell me Jesus and... and um, <laughs> Zinchenko. Zinchenko. He would go, yeah, all right, Sam. 
Um, sorry, Pep, if you're listening to this and saying nothing's further from the truth. Sam, but <laughs> none of us want good players to go to our rivals. Well, they're certainly not, those two have had a yeah, they've been had an influence in, as well as the other signings. On how, how successful Arsenal have been this year, like I mean, so it's it's it's, it's, it's definitely yeah. honestly, it, it, you have to have been in the dressing room to realise that, and we have been in a lot of dressing rooms that if you have players in the dressing room that know how to win, that know how to win games through their through what they've won, it's, you know, and there's only two of them, you know, Jesus and Zinchenko have gone in and said, no, 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 training training session, pass goes astray, you know. Uh, we used to do this throw and volley. If the volley doesn't go into the hands of the... Hold it a minute. Get that. So you take the standards up and that's what they've done. That's what they've done. They've gone to Arsenal along with Arteta and the players, of course, but they've taken the standards to a different level. And I think a lot of it's down to the two players he signed. It's funny, you know, as a city... Sorry, sorry Sam. You, We had Wes here uh, as, as our guest, like yeah. me, and uh, Wes Brown. And, and it's so right in what he said. Like, I mean, his life was so easy when he played on a Saturday. Because the players he trained with were better yes. than the players he played against. And there's <laughs> yeah. nothing that's further very, from the truth than that. It came true. on to me when Wes actually said it. He said, I used to mark all the best players from Manchester United in our training sessions. But that's so then yeah. when I went to understand yeah. it, more often than not, these players that yeah. were playing against weren't as good. So, it, it, you know, the level of training that's happened at Arsenal has been lifted by the quality of player that they've been introduced by yeah. then going on the field. And being and, and being much better. That's, 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 it's a great point because then your standards are so high that when you watch that Man United side that Wes was playing in, they, it, it looks so easy for them for that reason. For that reason, yeah. You know, and um, as a City fan, I think the Jesus and the Zinchenko thing. I don't think I've never really heard any City fans complain that they went to Arsenal actually because I think we had so much affinity for both of them as players, especially Zinchenko. Yeah. It was almost like we wanted the best for them, and we knew that we knew that yeah. wasn't going to come at City. Um, but hopefully it doesn't bite us. Wasn't the same for Sane, yes. was it, when he arrived? Eh? <laughs> <laughs> oh, no. When he came back, was it? We wanted Sane. <laughs> we wanted Sane to stay. Yeah, we weren't happy about that. Uh. Um, so looking at one end of the table, going down to the other end of the table, it's been really, really close at the bottom of the yeah. Premier League, Dion. Yeah. Are we, do you think are we kind of set now that it looks like Southampton are, are probably doomed now? Yeah, unfortunately, I think they're in a situation now where they, they, they probably will nick a couple more wins, but I do believe that people above them will do the same. So, yeah, I, I like Southampton as a football club. They've got a, and have had a great, a great academy for, for a long, long time. I think it all went wrong when they got rid of Ralph Hassenhutl, to be honest with you. I liked him as a manager. I thought he was good. I've been on the training ground, interviewed him and a couple of his players. <clears throat> I think Danny was there. Was Danny, Danny was there for a while, wasn't he? Danny Ings. Mm-hmm. Yeah, was that, yeah, Danny, Danny, Danny was there for a while, and I remember interviewing Danny. Wouldn't sign a new contract, so they sold him before okay. it ran out, didn't it? So, okay. so therefore, know. I went down there on the training pitch, and I and I just seen the the camaraderie and the togetherness they had down there, even though they weren't having good times. A couple of nine nils as well, which was not great to have on your CV, but I think they might have been okay, you know, with with Ralph. I really do. I like the football club, but I, unfortunately, this season, some of your best say. players, Dion, it's hard. Can't yeah. continue. Yeah. It ultimately fails in the end mm. because it's as, as good as it gets when you get that period and you've got to try and uh, obviously finance his rule. Yeah. Rule every football club today, of course. But but when when you've got a pocket of good players, particularly younger players that have come through, you, the most important thing is not not your financial director saying we can't turn this money down, etc. It's keeping him. Yeah. And too many... Young players are enticed away too quickly. And if you like, don't repay the club that's looked after them for a while. But on the other end, directors not understanding that the the, the wealth of the football club will be far greater than the 50 million or 60 yes. million they get for that player there. Yeah. Because now you put it put in your you're putting your status in the Premier League under under threat. Because you will not be able to go out and replace that player if you're not successful. Yeah, but you 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 won't spend the same amount of money. Correct. Mm. They'll give you twenty million back, and what do you get for twenty million? Mm. Mediocrity, and and so all all of a sudden, then then you you end up losing your job because the deterioration of the team, and that's what happens. So on the basis of keep selling your best players, is is being determined enough to keep hold of them for long enough, and then obviously, of course. If the valuation is sixty million, but then you get hundred million or hundred and ten million, well, then you've got negotiating tool 
on will they give you 60, 70 yeah. million back to strengthen the team again? And you've got to be brave as well. So you, you know what I mean? Got to be but you've got, you've got to try and make the directors understand. Mm. And the financial directors are an absolute pain in the backside for you. And it's all about finance. It's all about spreadsheets to them. It's all about them sitting down. Why do you need to spend this and that? And it's 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 not about the 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 way that you provide your service to make that player feel so good to get out of the pitch and play on a Saturday. They don't understand that. They're just mm. numb accountants who do figures in their office every day and go on and think what a great job they've done. Like I me, mean, because the spreadsheet looks all right. Our job is to entertain. Our job is to go out there and make sure that the fans get up and f turn up every week and see the best players they can see yeah. for their football club. Uh, they, 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 that, so that's what you're fighting against mm. a lot when you're sat in that chair as a manager. So when you talk about dealing with the players and all that, it's a far greater challenge dealing with the, the huge amount of people that are being employed by foreign yeah. owners that you go to and try to make them understand mm. their, their position is... They want to stay in their position and see their position and provide the right money or profit or doing the right job. But that can be to the detriment of the manager mm -hmm. yeah. and the team. And that's that's the balance that most owners, I think, sometimes don't actually realise. What is the balance? Mm. You get the balance right. Liverpool recently have got the balance right. Man City certainly have got the balance right. And they learnt the hard way, got taken to the cleaners a few times when they first took over. Mm. You know, people just giving them players and all of a sudden they built their own infrastructure based on mm. what they learned from the first three or four years. And that is, you know, that now paying dividends. Their, mm. their life is about not the team now, about the team in three years, five years. So they're buying more for, the, for then than they are for now. It's so much fact, easier. Pep made a profit, didn't he? So, yeah, so much you know what I mean? Yeah, it's so much easier talking about football than being a manager. <laughs> Honestly, just go and talk about it, sit in a studio, have a chat with your pals. Yeah. Being a manager is a nightmare, isn't it? Well, talking about that big, I'll say, you, like you mentioned 100 million, you mentioned 100 million, there's only one name comes into my mind. Um, obviously, you would have watched Jack, Jack Grealish a lot when he was at Villa. Are yeah. we at the point <clears throat> now where he's justifying that price tag? I don't, I don't think he's, I don't think, justifying his price tag, I don't think that's going to bother him. Or anybody around. Does anything bother Jack? No, that that which is great. That's great. Which is great to see. Doesn't bother and, Jack. Does and, it? and a lot of the times when we see players interviewed, they are very regimented because they are taught that way to be regimented. Don't say too much. These are the words you can use when this question is asked. Jack's very much himself. He's very relaxed. He's he's comfortable with his own vocabulary on TV, and he speaks very well, just like a little kid. Bit like Rooney did when he was a kid, you know, just enjoying his football. I want to play again. I want to play again. Connor Cody's excellent as well. Jordan Henderson's excellent. Those kind of players. We need those kind of characters. In regards to Jack's football, I think he's been brilliant. I think he's realised now that he's realised that I don't have to be the man all the time. You know, at Villa, obviously there was a lot of weight on his shoulders. Get the ball to Jack. Get the ball to Jack. And he and he delivered, by the way, most times he delivered for Villa. Um, but now he's gone to another club where there's another 25 Jack Grealishes of that standard, regardless of what position you play. They are all of that standard. So he can now fit his way into the, into the game and into the side and he's, and he's enjoying his football. He's not having half, half as much of the ball he would have at Villa, but he's, he's, he's so talented. He's, he's, really he's, he's so talented. Yeah. He's just an incredible footballer. Great to watch. He's always a joy to work with as well. You know, losing Jack, we're talking about that, but, but, but I was just talking about before about selling players. Cost Dean Smith his job. Yeah. Of course, he's yeah. back. Yeah. Dean Smith yeah. is lost, back. Lost, yeah, yeah. lost Jack Grealish. Yeah. Mm -hmm. look, he was, you know, so important yeah. to Aston Miller. Because you looked at the stats, you, look at, you, you looked at what he did and how he did it and where he got... Aston Villa too, by receiving the ball in his own half, by the next thing he'd be fouled up in his own, yeah, yeah, their 18-yard yeah, yeah, box, yeah, yeah. you know, or, or make a, a, an assist. Yeah. Obviously, we'd all like him to score more goals, but like the, what he did for Aston Villa, and the loss of that player mm, took huge, a yeah. long time for, and Villa have had to buy several players to get to where they are now. And obviously, in between that, I thought, you know, Dean losing his job at the time was pretty pretty harsh considering yeah, what he'd too. done. Me too. And of course, Stephen Gerrard again, obviously in his second season, didn't quite get to where they wanted to go. So 
it's probably justified in that term that that Uri's come in and 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 now got the squad to a better level based on they've spent mm. Jack's money quite well. Seems yeah. like no, agree. You know what I mean? Agree. Yeah, definitely. For a big loss for Dean Smith. It felt harsh on Dean Smith when he was sacked from Norwich as as well after that. Yeah, in, yeah. And yeah. you happy to see him back in the Premier League? In oh, Leicester? absolutely. It's, you know, it's, you know he's he's he, you know, from from his Brentford days, he's learnt his trade, like you mean, and uh, you know, I think that uh, uh, the Brentford manager now is uh, is worked under Dean and learnt how to yeah. go about how to do the job, and he's doing a fantastic job there. I wonder if somebody will come for him, Thomas. Thomas, yeah, Thomas Frank, maybe. There's, there's, there's some really but, good or has he got the reputation yeah. where he's a bit plays a bit more? <laughs> well, only you know time I mean? will tell. You know I mean? I mean? It's like, oh, he plays the wrong way. Only time you know will I mean? tell. He's done a great job. But, you know, Ivan Tony, why is he not going somewhere else? Yeah. Yeah. I mean, we'll do, we'll why do... is somebody not bidding 80, 100 million for him? Do you think they will? Do you think, because I, I have, I mean, he's been linked he's with a few awesome, clubs man. now. I mean, now he's yeah. learned how to play in the Premier yeah. League. And and scoring more goals than he's ever scored before. Yeah. So well, you said he's, he's dying. He's breed, proven he? now. He's dying. Breed. Yeah, he said he's one of the dying breed, isn't he? Yeah, he is. Could he go he's, United? Do you think? Yeah, he's good enough, in my opinion. And I think he'd get better. Mm. Uh, yeah, but we talk about he likes a big centre forward. Yes, he centre. does. He, he does. loves a big centre forward. Yeah, he does. He's quick. So, and they need yeah. one. Yeah. yeah, yeah, need a goal scorer most definitely. No, I like. I like. Um, I mean, Dean Smith as well. Back to Dean Smith. You know, he took Ollie Watkins to. To Villa, so yeah. you know he, he knows his players. Dean, he's a very good manager, lovely bloke, and I'm really glad. To, I'm, I'm glad. I'm glad to see our managers, the British managers, get get the work they need. I'm love to see. I'm really happy with the young managers as well. I'm, I'm, Sam will agree with this. Yeah. Eddie and and Frank and Daichi, you know, given given a, a good go. There's more out there, but and, and Arteta as well, of course. But younger managers getting getting a chance at these big clubs as well. You know, let's mix it all up a little bit. And I think it's great to see it really is. And they're doing well. Doing well. Yeah. Right. We have quick fire questions, but we stopped calling no, them. No. We've just stopped, haven't we? They're not, Sam, so, Sam, they're not so quick fire <coughs> questions. No. Not Sam so said to me, these quick fire questions, Dion, they'll be about five minutes. Yeah. <laughs> bear with me. Bear with me. He said. So we don't I'm have... going to try my best. <laughs> I am today. I'm going to try my best and keep it to less than a minute. Okay. <laughs> right. Here we go. First one for you, Dion. Best manager you've ever played under? Best manager would be Sir Alex, and that's quite easy. Best manager was Sir Alex. Um, just as a manager, as a man manager, as an, he looks after you individually, Sir Alex Ferguson was the best. Best coach, Gordon Strachan. Oh, fab. Okay. Yeah. Oh, Gordon like Strachan. Okay. Um, for both of you, who's going down? Which three teams are getting relegated from the Premier League? Oh, wow. Leicester, definitely. Well, Leicester, definitely, do you think? I think so, with okay. Southampton. Okay, and it yeah, could be... Don't want it to be, but then if they're not careful, it could be Everton this time. Do you they're think so? Very careful, yeah. Mm. I and think South they've Hampton. got enough and to get out of it in Southampton, yeah. I'm just looking at the table here, by the way. Excuse oh, me. good, yes. Yeah. I'm just looking at the table here to make sure I'm not... Any one of them four, I think this is yeah. the I'm, not, I'm not ordering food. I'm looking at the table. <laughs> and, and I'm thinking to myself... If you look down there, Southampton, so what? Southampton, Leicester, Forest, Forest, and then out of the out of it, you've got Everton, Leeds, West Ham. So Some big teams. Down I do think that those, those there. three that are there, Southampton, have got, have Southampton, got the, Leicester, have got Forest. the hardest job to get out of it. Yeah, I think Sean Dyche has got enough, or Everton are going enough. If they overcome the horrendous injury list, to keep getting one of the biggest. Well, it was a big problem when I first arrived. There was eight injured, you know what I mean? And, and that was, again, when you go into a struggling club and I say you've got to stop the goals going in, the first thing you do is hammer. Mm. Hammer the medical staff if you've got seven, eight injuries. And what look at your training straight away, especially if the soft tissue injuries. Because it, 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 one of the reasons you're not normally down there is because your injury list for your it's, better players it's, it's is too huge. great. Yeah, yeah. Dominic so Calvert-Lewin is looking so he's, he, could, yeah. he could be on his way back, which is good. But it's been so long, yeah. Dion. It's been this, that, any, yeah. anything mm. other than... He hasn't had a run of five or six games for over two years now. No. And Dodge hasn't had a run of of there where he's got everybody he needs. I mean, that's exactly fit. right. I mean, so, you know, I mean, occasionally I still speak to, uh, to Farad Machine very, very occasionally, but... 
I think that uh, you know their injury list. Looking at their injury list now, is is something that Sean would try his best to overcome first. And if he's got that full squad, I think they're going to be okay. Yeah. But if he, yeah, that it was my it was my it was my big problem when I were there. Even though I finished eighth, mm. we couldn't score goals. Dominic was young, great potential yeah. centre forward then. Um, and and held the ball up and brought up other people into the game, but in the box was missing more chances than he was scoring. Yeah. And obviously, when that turned around, um, he looks like looked like hell of a player because then he be looked like become a goal scorer. So it's crucial. But they, again, they're struggling to score goals again. Yeah. yeah. Was that a minute? It's way more than a minute. <laughs> see, that, <laughs> go, see. Was that, that was the first question. Got lost Pick away, bang point. gone. Who were your three teams, Dion? Uh, I would go Southampton. I'm hoping Leicester get out of it. Forest, I think, will struggle as well. Uh, I'd love Leicester to get out of it. So who's going to be if Leicester get out of it? I think it'll be Southampton, Forest, and one other. <laughs> <laughs> I can't think it's Too tight. Moment. Okay. Too tight. Too tight. Right. Who wins the FA Cup? So we are recording this a few days before the weekend of the semi finals. Okay. Over to you, Sam. <laughs> Yeah. Over to you. It'll be City, won't it? Don't you think? Who do you think City will play in the final? United or Brighton? Good semi Oh, yeah. Well, I tell you what, I watched Brighton live against Chelsea. And wow. they're good, aren't they? They're good, aren't they? They are very I mean, good. They made, they made Chelsea look like a, mm. a novice, novice of a team. You know, so, so I'd have to go... I'd have to go because I'm up here. It's have to go City United ah, in the final. I think it'll be all Manchester final. Yeah. Do you? Yeah, yeah, yeah. All Manchester final, I, mean, I think. Oh. Definitely. Oh, you're not happy about that. So I just would you rather play, but as a City fan then, would you rather play Brighton or United? It's funny because I'd rather, if say we're going to win it, I'd rather beat United in the yeah. final because that would be better. But I'd rather play Brighton because I'll enjoy the build-up. I w- if we play United, I will not enjoy the build-up. The week before, well, the hours nerves? before the game, because that- the nerves will be horrendous, okay. yes. Okay. Um, <laughs> Yeah, but I think yeah. You should Brighton see have got my a nerves on the day before the game with your manager. Yeah. <laughs> I couldn't you see you being nervous. Games. I couldn't see you being nervous at all, me. Well, uh, it's very, very well uh, hidden. Okay, all right, fair yeah. enough. Fair enough. So you both yeah. going City. So who wins the Premier League? I think Arsenal win it. Oh, okay, Sam. I think Arsenal win it. Arsenal will win it. Yeah. Okay. I think Arsenal will win it. I think. I think. I think. Get to the stage now where you, everybody's doubted Arsenal. Everybody, even myself, and even when they've had a run of five wins or whatever it may be, oh, I'm not sure, City chasing them. All he has to do is not lose to Man City. Yeah. And he'll win it. That's it. Yeah. That, that's the thing. Not lose, is, not lose is the big thing. Not so much win, but not lose against City, yeah. which is the hardest thing. City are the, the worst team to be chased by. The worst team. Mm-hmm. City win it, by the way, but okay. Okay. Um, <laughs> Nobody asked you. It wasn't a, no, nobody else. asked you that question. <laughs> You're asking me and Sam. <laughs> I love this question. What is the strangest thing you've ever seen a manager ban? And I want to know what the strangest ban. thing is you ever banned. I'm thinking like ketchup, oh, salt, no, not, not, like... No, 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 I'll tell you the worst thing I ever did to a player when, when I first started it was when we go back to old school was, and everybody thought, well, how can you do this? Yeah, was ban alcohol in the players' lounge. You banned alcohol oh, in the players' completely. lounge? When I got to my I'm out. No, Gaff, no. I'm out. Gaff, I'm out. Sell me, sell me, I'm he, off. He'd won the transfer, yeah. <laughs> Took a long time to overcome that one. I mean, okay. And they've got the lads to put the dangers of alcohol in front of, you know, what it what it may do to you. Not, not that you're, you know they're ever not going to drink it, but just not promoting it anymore. Yeah, yeah, stopped yeah. it on the coach, stopped it in the players' lounge. Battered for a while, like I mean, but persevered in the end, and everybody paid off. Paid, paid off. off in the end. Mm-hmm. So the, the, it's it's not it's not the weirdest or worst thing, but I remember John Gregory having us all in the dressing room, and he said, "Listen, lads, listen, I've got to stop it now. You're walking around without your flip flops on, so everybody wears flip flops." Yeah, I know a few of you like a fag as well. So if you want to smoke, go outside and smoke. Don't be smoking in there. Yeah, you know. yeah. And no phones. Keep your phones in your pockets, please. Oh, that would be a nice keep one your now. Pockets, bro. Keep your pockets. In, you know, walk around the training ground like that. You're not talking to anybody. You're not being allowed to walk around the yeah. training ground. About five minutes later, Mark Bosnich 
<laughs> walked into the gym. He's a goalkeeper, by the way. Yeah. Walked into the gym with no flip flops, having a fag on the phone. What happened? He got fined, obviously. <laughs> he got fined. He got fined about five minutes later. So that, that, that was one of the funny things. Gaffer said, don't do that, don't do that, and don't do that. Okay, no problem at all. Flip flops, no flip flops. <laughs> Can't win, can you? No. Can't win. I, think fi- win money. I think fines, uh, 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 Sam will tell you the same. I think fines are, if they're reasonable fines, I think, I think fines are good. If they're reasonable and they're not really extortion, a lot of the money goes back to the players or to the, 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 the fund where you yeah. have a Christmas dinner or, or a charity. Kind of stuff. However, or charity, yeah. Um, but I think little fines are good to keep people on their toes and, you know, standards. Yeah. You know. I was at a, I used to work at a Manchester charity, sorry, Sam, yeah. and um, I won't name it, but the year that Mario Balotelli was at Manchester City, <laughs> oh, we got a hefty oh, donation at the end of the season. <laughs> well, well, I, I uh, uh, tried uh, most places to keep those type of fines for the, for the players' benefit, yeah, and one of the best benefits that became apparent um, and what I did starting at the Bolton days was it paid for the trip to Dubai. <laughs> so, it, you know, we talk about the wealth of the Premier League, but you try and get you know you try and get a break to Dubai for the team and uh, and get them in business class flights get the hotel, get everything set up, your training ground and what have you, and all that, and, and have these financial directors saying, do you know how much this will cost? So what you do to overcome that is you get the fine pot and the there's a there's a certain fines for red cards, yellow cards, and mm. all sorts that, 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 that you can't do. That happens and it, the money goes wherever it goes to the FA and Premier League. But there's internal fines, keeping them as a separate pot, and then when it comes to going, they go, well, we're going to Dubai for that's going to go. No, fine money's paying for it. So a, round of, a round of applause for the best fine contributor <laughs> would be a part of my, a part of my, well, lads, I'd like to thank. Yeah. Who would it have been? Well, well, I'll tell you the biggest man would be Benny, Benny McCarthy at, when I was at Blackburn, paid for, paid for the trip because. He's late. No, his late? body fat was too high. <laughs> Benny, Benny, if your body fat doesn't come down, they got once a month they got checked for the body fat because you know, ten percent or less is written in the in the contract, of course. And oh, Benny, wow. Benny, of course, Benny's wife did apparently. From all what was said, was she went back to Spain or wherever she lived, so Benny was left. Oh, to fend in Manchester himself. and fend for himself, of course. So, oh, poor Benny. <laughs> so he got all the nutritional stuff and all that, but couldn't couldn't <laughs> get his. All I wanted to do is reduce from where he was gradually. I didn't want him to go. Well, you know, go yeah. within a month. Go, just come down. If he come down what half a percent or one percent a month, it was enough. Um, I wonder if the lads were sending him takeaways so well, that he ended up paying for yeah, the exactly. for their Dubai trip. Yeah, yeah. Benny, oh, Benny, get it, it down. It, yeah. Bolton, it, Bolton. A lot of the time it was Jufy, you know, because he yeah, would, yeah. He, you know, we had, you know, he used to catch Jufy out for not to, uh, these are long answers again, aren't they? Uh, for <laughs> for uh, not getting back on time from international games. I mean, his granny okay. died three times. <laughs> El has you know I mean? He forgot it all. He died <laughs> once, then twice, then three times. He just said, you know, <laughs> but there you go. Yeah. But I used to love him anyway. Brilliant. Doofy. Loved him. I'm glad. I'm glad these are not quick fire. We wouldn't get these answers yeah, well, if they yeah, were. Yeah, okay. um, have you got any superstitions or did you have any when you were a player? Not not massively. I, I everything was left. Left sock, left, left arm, armband would go on my left all the time, left boot laces, everything. And it's sort of it's sort of it's sort of in my life now. Mm-hmm. Everything left. I put my, my daughter's left shoe on first. And it's kind of weird. But yeah, I, everything's left for me, unfortunately. But uh, nothing weird, to be honest with you, which is, which I'm pleased about. Which is a short answer. Yes. Yes, yes we got one. Okay, who's the toughest opponent you ever played against? Toughest opponent I ever played against um, as a centre forward, it would have been uh, Big Pally was good. Gary Pallister was good at, at United. Not not dirty, just very clever. And he's now quick. He's very quick as well. Yeah. yeah, very good friend of mine now. So he he knew me my game very well. And as a centre half, it would have been uh, Mick Harford. Mick Harford played against Mick Harford. Played for Wimbledon. Big. Strong man, you know, just a big man that just would wanted to, you know, it, it, 
He doesn't Mick, talk. Mick ran into my elbow, unfortunately. Did he really? Yeah. You well, see? I was at Coventry and he played for Birmingham. It happened a lot in your career, yeah, didn't it? Did, it? Yeah, it yeah. happened a lot. People I have told me that. I ran into Sam's elbow. I did that, like, but he <laughs> ran into my elbow. Yeah. I, I actually, that's one, of, that's, that's one of my stories, Mick. I actually elbowed Mick by mistake. By mistake? Yes. By mistake. Like that's not a good thing to do. Yeah. Like, no, by mistake. And, he spent and, uh, years trying to get me back. <laughs> yes, and, and he will. If it's a charity <laughs> match, if it's still a charity match, he'll still get shot. I cut him on his eye. And just, just, just as I've headed the ball, bam, I knew that Mick was there. And I thought, just protect yourself because Mick's there. Don't fucking do anything to you. Bam, headed it there. Caught him in his face. Cut his face. Oh, God. And I could see Mick on the floor and he's a little bit, little bit of blood. Nothing major. And the referee's walking over to me. And he's gone, Dublin, come here. Dublin, come here. Mick's just got off the floor. Oh. Quick as you like. Gone over to the referee. He's gone, referee, referee. Leave him on. <laughs> so I could get you. <laughs> <laughs> That's when I started to panic. Because <laughs> he That's wanted to it. get you. Uh, what he, was it like playing against like Wimbledon or other big teams like that? Like it, back they were, then? They were fine because they, yes, as as tough as they were and as as much as they knew they wanted a scrap and they'd all be in. Again, as we've mentioned, we had some, you know, big lads as well that could, you know, look after themselves and we'd have a beer in the, in the lounge afterwards. That's the difference. We'd have a scrap on the pitch and all that, hate, 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 hate. Then we'd have a beer. And that's the way the game was, was played back then, you know? And fear, not when you're on the pitch. Not when you're on the pitch. Right, my last quick fire question for you both. And it's the big one. <laughs> not so quick fire. Okay, <laughs> you ready for it? You've got to choose one. You can't sit on the fence. Oh, Ooh, no. Right. Homes under the hammer or match of the day? <laughs> Homes under the hammer all day long. <laughs> Sam? That's to be match of the day. Oh! <laughs> Sorry, no. He's killed me, isn't he? <laughs> but, uh, by the way, though, it was strange to see that when there was the dispute, which I'm glad is resolved, but fifth, was it 500,000 people watched match the day viewed that they had the previous week with, with yeah. no commentaries, just the games. It was, it was weird though, wasn't it? It was very, I think it was about nine, it was about nine minutes long. Something yeah, strange. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, know, just, I missed the commentators when I watched I that. Really missed you know, them. So. No, it was, it was odd. Go. But they got it done, though. They got, they got it, it sorted, yeah. Um, and the last thing I wanted to talk to you about, Sam, was I, mean, I was thinking about you this week. Obviously, the, the podcast is No Tippy Tappy Football. You talk about it a lot. On uh, We talk about it a lot. I um, cover, I watch a lot of league football um, for another show that I do. And I don't know if you'll have seen it. You probably won't have. Did you see Rochdale conceding a goal? Well, not even conceding a goal. Rochdale at the bottom of Division 2, Sam. Yes. They're about to go out of the league in their 102-year yeah. history. And they are tippy tapping the ball around the back line. And I kid you not, Sam, as soon as I saw it, I thought of you. The tippy tapping it around the defender, tippy tappies it back to the goalkeeper, and the goalkeeper it goes under his foot into the goal. Like they're about to go down, and they're conceding an own goal because they're tippy tapping it around. It's the manager's fault. He's the one to blame. He's the one that's doing it. He's the one that continues to do it. I mean, Robbie, who's the manager previous, works with me at Sunderland and worked with me at West Brom, who's an absolutely terrific coach. Like I mean. And uh, and and of course he 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 managed Rochdale, and I I warned him about it, and I said in the end the players are not good enough to do it, and yeah. if you don't change, it'll cost you your job, and it did cost him it cost him his job, and, uh, you, and yes, they're still doing I, it. Well, so I if I have, I admire him for going their own way, go your own way, go your own way. That's that's what you, that's what you want to do, and I know there's huge amounts of pressure for doing it. But doing it at Rochdale, and that's what I, I think I've said this on podcast. I watched some of the FA Cup yeah. early rounds, like yeah. I mean, some of the non league teams doing it. And I'm going, really? How many how many goals are conceded by you losing the ball in your own fine defensive third compared to how many goals you score at the other end? So you, if you're yeah. the if you're the manager, that's your first calculation. And, and like you said, it's oh, it's, it's it's a pandemic yeah, in the game. Yeah, and, and it's you know I mean? it's unfortunately it's 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 coaches like Pep and and Klopp that have done it for a long time and are the best at it because they have very very good players and can cope with the pressure of the squeeze. However, if you don't have that, then the manager has to say, right, we're not quite good enough to do this. Let's try and find another way. Or let's give it a go, and if it works, continue. If it doesn't work, bypass it and just go long. So you've got to find. Sean Dyche said to me, "Listen, Dion, I'm going to play the way 
he's going to win us the game. That's all that Sean, Sean Dyke said. Yeah, I'm not going to play short and I'm not going to play long. I'll find a way mm. for us to play that's going to win the game. Yeah. And I don't care how it is. You would, I'm sure you'd well, I trained, I trained, I trained, I trained a coach the team to play differently, certainly a lot of the time in the early years in the Premier League or if I go to a team that's struggling, find a way to t- 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 just make a difference. Tippy tap round them. That's what you're yeah. <laughs> Tinker. I tinker, say. yeah. Tinker. tinker. Because it was <laughs> imperative that they, they understood change. Yeah. And, and, having, and having the capabilities of change. Now, that can only happen if you bring change into your coaching. Yeah, so true. when they go, well, we'll do this every week, we'll do that every week, do this, I would come in and say, no, we're going to do this. Oh, oh, this is the coaches, not one of the players. And I go, no, they've got to be adaptable to change. Mm-hmm. They've got to be able to think for themselves and think that we're going to change or, or cope with that or ma- not just making substitutions, but be able to do it because the need for change, not just every week because the opposition is so much better than you in a lot of the occasions but the need for change actually in the game to try and get a result is very important to talk about in your mind and you can do that by coaching through the week yes. there we go so sadly Dion we always run out of time we never get you know we feel like I could talk to you we could talk to you all afternoon I'm sure we get some <laughs> Brilliant stories. Yeah. Um, but thank you. Thank you so much for thank joining you, us it. Thank you. Loved it. Today. It's been a pleasure. Thanks, boss. Nice Cheers. You. Thank you very Good much. Good luck with your career thank still. You. It's going you very, very well. Much. Appreciate it. And I've loved it. Thank you all for joining us again on another episode of No Tippy Tappy Football. If, if you want a guest on House of the Amber, I'm available. <laughs> 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 we can't afford him. We can't afford him. <laughs> uh. <laughs> that, we'll be back next week with another episode of No Tippy Tappy Football brought to you by William Hill. <laughs>